It was in East Africa that our human ancestors evolved for some six million years. Like other living beings, they adapted to changes in their environment. But what exactly were those changes? And how did they influence human evolution? New research is revealing details of how a changing climate may have pushed our early ancestors to become the humans we are today. This site was reported to us by the owner of this farm. The owner reported it to the National Museums of Kenya. That's how we got to come and check it up and we found lots of bones lying on this uh, ground. Slowly and methodically, anthropologists are piecing together a timeline of our human ancestors. By six million years ago, they had gone from living in the trees to both climbing trees and walking on two feet in search of food. But by two million years ago, they were primarily living on the ground. As we come through our evolution, we abandon the life in trees. And what that means is if we abandon life in the trees, we have to be good walkers on two legs on one on the ground. Because when you walk on the ground, there are lots of dangers. For decades, scientists have worked with the idea that our ancestors left the trees because of a drying of the environment. In general, East Africa has become progressively drier over the past five million years. And the landscape has changed from one that was predominantly covered by forest to one predominantly covered by grassland and sparse forest vegetation. But was it simply a long drying trend? Or was there something more complicated about the climate that favored our ancestors' key traits, such as upright walking and increased brain size? To answer these questions, geologists have been studying rocky outcrops. But the rocks are typically weathered and eroded. So the view of the ancient past has been obscured. That is about to change. An unusual collaboration of anthropologists and geologists working in Kenya and Ethiopia has begun to refine the story of the ancestral human environment. The scientists are using drilling technology to collect sediments from ancient lake beds in areas where important human fossils have been found. By looking at the same interval of time when these human fossils are found, we can get a very detailed record of environmental change, particularly through a period that we already suspect from a wide variety of evidence is a period of major climatic change towards drier conditions. What we want to do is to get continuous and undisturbed lake sediment sequences, which will not have any gaps and uh, which we can study at fairly high resolution. 15 meters. Keep up that rate, we'll be done in a week. What they're trying to find out is if climate changes and related shifts in the environment coincided with key milestones in human evolution. One place that may hold critical answers is Hadar in the Afar region of Ethiopia. It was in this arid landscape that the skeleton Lucy was discovered in 1974. Lucy lived 3.2 million years ago. A simple monument marks the site of the discovery. What Lucy represents is a time, a moment in our evolutionary history that really captures that mix of ape and human in one skeleton. Lucy has longer arms and a small brain, like a chimpanzee, and more human-like body structure when you look at their hip bones and the legs and the foot. 
To find out more specifics about Lucy's environment, scientists are drilling into an ancient dry lake bed close to where her fossilized bones were found. So the reason we're drilling in this general area is actually to capture sort of what the climate and environment was like during Lucy's time. And the drilling is great because the lakes themselves, they represent the, the watershed or the basin as a whole, whereas these fossil sites represent just one spot on the ground. So I found a couple of crocodile. In both Ethiopia and Kenya, the fossil sites and drill sites are located in the East African Rift Valley. This valley was formed by the movement of the Earth's enormous tectonic plates, which have been splitting the entire continent apart in East Africa for many millions of years and forming a huge trough. It's an ideal location for fossils to accumulate. It's an area where for millions of years, going back to some of our earliest ancestors and the split between humans, say, and the great apes, we have a place where sediments and fossils can be found and are there specifically because of this rifting process. The Rift Valley's ancient lakes are of special interest to anthropologists. One of them is Lake Turkana in northern Kenya. Here, 1.6 million years ago, lived a young male that scientists call Turkana boy. His fossilized skeleton was discovered in 1984. Yeah, hello, how are you? Hey, Jock. Yeah, hi. Hey, Jock. Where was the first bit Kamoya found? It was picked around here, almost at the range, the top layer. This to get to fish, 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 yeah. This fish. The excavation took us quite a long time because the fossils were scattered all over. And I remember actually we were like here for about four years. Certainly one of the most striking things about the Tucana boy discovery was that when that skeleton was reconstructed into something like a 70% complete uh, skeleton, it, it looked like us. It really caught everyone's eyes as, you know, this was the size, shape, the stature, the build of modern humans and nothing like any of the earlier forms or the close relatives that existed at that time. Turkana boy was a member of an early human species, Homo erectus. Homo erectus looked pretty much like us with the guard to body proportions. Long legs, uh, probably an endurance walker, being able to uh, undertake the life of a hunter-gatherer and probably due to its strength was able to knock off large flakes which is the beginning of making stone hand axes. The drill site chosen to examine Tulkana boy's environment is close to where his bones were found. In the drill core sediments, scientists are delighted to find key items that will shed light on the environment in the time of Turkana boy. One of them is fossilized pollen. When you look at the pollen, it's a very good way of putting together a pretty detailed picture of what the vegetation was like at a certain time. Um, a lot of it is based on the kinds of vegetation the communities that you see today, but you also see vegetation communities that were a lot different as well. The question is, how did the vegetation in this region change with the drying climate? And how did our human ancestors adapt and evolve? One of the theories in evolution in general is that you have changes in the environment driving changes in organisms through natural selection adapting to those environments. So if you rely on that type of vegetation as your food source and those resources change or your, you change the type of food source, you go from eating fleshy fruits to harder nuts, your teeth are going to adapt differently so that you can eat those types of food. Thanks to advanced analytical techniques, the secrets of our past can be studied as never before. For that, the drill cores have been sent to a special laboratory at the University of Minnesota in the United States. Here, scientists slice open the cores and extract all sorts of valuable substances 
locked away until now in the lake bed sediments. We'll be looking at charcoal that gives us a record of fire. We can see the fossils of roots in here uh, and burrows from insects that would have formed on the landscape uh, after those lake beds dried out. They find volcanic ash, which will give them the ages of the sediment layers. They take samples of organic compounds for geochemical studies of ancient lake temperatures and rainfall patterns. They even find the remains of minute creatures, such as diatoms and ostracods. Ostracods are essentially a little bivalve with a shrimp inside. They are sensitive to changes in water conditions. So we're hoping to use them as a means of understanding what the conditions were like in the Turkana Basin around two million years ago. High-tech analysis of the drill cores is shedding light on how climate changes led to specific human adaptations over the past six million years. And this new data may provide insights into how Homo sapiens and other species might respond to the rapidly changing climate that is happening right now. Of the more than 10 human species that once lived on our planet, all but Homo sapiens have gone extinct. Some of them probably because they failed to adapt to climate change. All of those other species have gone extinct. What were the conditions that caused those extinctions? Were they climatic? Those are important questions and ones that have implications for our understanding of our own adaptability. Learning precisely how environmental changes affected human evolution is crucial for us today as we currently experience what may be the fastest changing climate in all of human history. Even though we are a young species, only 200,000 years old, the contribution to the climatic change and environmental change that we are bringing about is unprecedented. The good news is that we also happen to be a species with a brain capacity that allows us not only to transform the environment, but also to comprehend what it means, what it entails. So if we were to transform our environment in a sustainable fashion, that will give us a better chance of surviving into the future.